Welcome to South America. In this video, we're taking you to the country of Uruguay, right across the river from Argentina. We'll focus on Colonia and Montevideo, their famous letter signs, cobbled streets, colonial ruins, and their bustling sandy beaches and gorgeous palaces. We'll be sampling Uruguay's most famous food and what's everyone drinking? On this trip, our mode of transport is a golf cart. So fun! There's room for you too, so hop in. And if we haven't met, hi, we're Mandy and Orlando and you're watching the Destination Everywhere channel. Last week we were in Argentina and we just took the ferry across to Uruguay. It was easy. You go from the Bouquet bus terminal in Buenos Aires and it only takes an hour and 15 minutes, but give yourself time to go through immigration. It's a really popular ferry ride. Pottering around Colonia in a golf cart is so much fun. It's $50 a day and it's something different. We're driving along Rambla de las Americanas and our first stop is the Colonia sign, Letras de Colonia. Ooh, it's beach time already. This is a river, El Rio de la Plata. Beautiful. The water is so warm, I can spend the whole day here and it's so quiet. Well, this is random. It's a restored bull ring, but there's no bullfighting going on because here in Uruguay, it's illegal. You can take a tour of the grounds, but we're going to skip this one and head into the historic colonial quarter of town, people watching along the way. And it seems that everyone is doing the same thing, sitting around with friends and drinking yerba mate. If you don't know what it is, it's tea made from herbs and twigs of the holly bush, strong as coffee, but more nutritious like tea. Everyone has their own cup, their own straw and flask of hot water, and you can refill your flask in cafes everywhere. The historic quarter of Colonia de Sacramento is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's only two and a half acres in size, with walkable cobbled streets, cute cafes, bars and beach coves. There's a marina with an old wooden pier and a cultural centre with art and sculptures called Bastion del Carmen. And we're just rattling along the cobbles in the local neighbourhood, heading up to the lighthouse. This is Calle de San Francisco and on the corner is Bistro Pepitua and its sign says we have beer colder than your ex. Really? Because he was an iceberg. At the top of this street is the Colonial Lighthouse and next to it the ruins of the San Francisco Convent and the pinky red building is a Portuguese colonial museum called the Nacarello House and all this sits on the Plaza Mayor, the main square. And these gorgeous bright pink trees are everywhere. They're affectionately known in Uruguay as Palo Boracho, which literally means the drunken trunk. Around the corner is Calle de los Suspiros, the street of sighs. Ah, isn't it quaint? It's Colonia's most famous street, and at the bottom is a waterfront fort with its huge cannons, Bastion de San Miguel. The Portuguese and Spanish fought a lot over this town. Mmm, I'm smelling barbecue. I say we have dinner over here at the Reina Cafe Bar and my Uruguay t-shirt is telling me to eat asado. That's grilled meat, so we're having steak and chips tonight and someone is begging. Oh, go on, give him a bit. Looks like his little friend has a belly full already. What a life these dogs have. It seems that this corner is definitely the place to be. It's just past seven o'clock and crowds have started to flock. You can see why. Ooh, selfies, what a good idea, smile. 
Oh, your eyes are closed. One more. That's the one. Oh, time to go. We've got a bus to catch to Montevideo. This is the capital of Uruguay, and 1.3 million people call it home. We're starting our tour in the center of it all, at Plaza de Independencia. And what better place to stay than on the square itself? The red brick building is the Victoria Plaza Hotel and Casino. It's about 120 US dollars a night. And we got these views and a five-star gourmet breakfast included. I think that's a great deal. The capital itself is spread out, but all the great tourist spots are in this square. That's all of these places. But we're starting at the Plaza de Independencia. There's a lot going on. The tall building that looks like apartments is a bank. The white building with squares is the executive tower, the president's official workplace. The statue is Artigas's mausoleum, and the building with columns is Palacio Estevez, a museum of presidential history. And this gorgeous Art Deco Gothic building at the end is Salvo Palace. It was built by Italian Mario Palanti as a luxury hotel, but it never opened. Instead, it became a lighthouse for a while and was the tallest building in Latin America. Now, it's just offices, apartments, and there's even a tango museum. Apparently, Mario built it in three sections, hell being the lower floors, purgatory, the middle floors, and heaven, the higher floors. Um, I'll take the penthouse. Want to know more? Take a tour or go underground to the mausoleum of this soldier, Jose Gervasio Artigas. He's a national hero, the father of Uruguay. Behind Salvo Palace is Avenida 18 de Julio, the 18th of July Avenue, full of shops, cafes, and parks. And our first stop is Fabini Plaza, considered the most beautiful park in Montevideo. It's dedicated to the politician Juan Pedro Fabini, and the sculpture is the Monument of Disorder, depicting the horrors of war. Well, that's a bit morbid, so the next two stops are all about peace and love. We're coming up to the Fountain of the Padlocks, where people in love leave a padlock with their names engraved. How romantic. Let's take a photo, shall we? Wait a minute. This guy's pulling his pants up and bombing my photo. Can we get another one? That's better. Ready to do the most touristy thing in the city? The Montevideo Letters. I just want a great photo with the sign. Oh no, the letters are backwards. Can someone turn them around? Thanks. I love talking to the locals about their yerba mate tea culture. I'm fascinated. Punta Carretas Lighthouse is a great place for views. You can climb all the way to the top. But today it's closed and there's nothing else to do but take in the gorgeous sunset. For drinks and dinner a block in from the beach, there's Guipuz Coa Street, and Garcia is supposed to be the best restaurant in Uruguay. 
We had reservations and everything, but last week, wouldn't you know it, there was a fire and it's temporarily closed. So, across the street we go to La Perdiz for some asado. Nothing wrong with a load of grilled meat washed down with some local wine to end a perfect day. This morning, we're back in the square, Plaza de Independencia, but this time we're walking east through the gates of the citadel. We're doing some artsy stuff today. A quick stop at the oldest theatre in the city, Solis Theatre, where they have shows, concerts and tours of the inside. And while we're in this part of town, there's a mural a block away called Mural Diversidad Sexual. A little shout out to the gay community. Around the corner is probably Montevideo's most famous shopping street, Sarandi Street, where they have everything from local leather to Starbucks. I had to get my Uruguay mug for my collection. Flea market or antique market at Constitution Plaza. And this is on the famous walkway Sarandi. This is where all the shops are, restaurants. For a bit of peace and quiet, right behind Constitution Plaza is the Metropolitan Cathedral. Let's take a break. After church, lunch at the Puerto Market for some more asado. We heard the grilled meat here is off the charts. Hola. Let's ask the chef what the other things are. Queso, calabaza, pumpkin, and lamb, the long one. Y mucho chorizo. Ah. Wow. Muchas gracias. We decided against the little piggy and instead we're going for the calamari to start, followed by a ribeye steak with gorgonzola baked potato. It's to die for, especially when it's washed down with a local beer. Cheers. This market at the port is super touristy and it's not cheap, but it's an absolute must experience when you're in Montevideo. I think it's a good idea to walk off all this food in the park and then do a bit more sightseeing before dinner. We found a rather odd tourist attraction by the beach. It's the remains of an old fortress across the street from Plaza España. It looks like it used to be a base because there's an Anglican church there. There's no information, it's not signposted well, but it's a sweet place to just sit and have something sweet. In my little bag is an alfajor. It's a typical delicacy of Uruguay. Two cookies and dulce de leche inside. 
It's really good, that shortbread. It's like Scottish shortbread and caramel. Look. Well, it's almost time to go and we've seen and eaten so much in Montevideo, but we've forgotten one thing, the Chivito. We can't possibly leave Uruguay without trying its most famous sandwich. We'll never live it down. So our last stop is here at the Mercado Agricola for the last supper. Yes, it's a fruit and veg market, but it also has cafes. Okay, we're ready, bring it on. This is hard, it's very messy, and it's huge. It's steak, egg, ham, cheese, tomato, lettuce, put everything in there. Stuffed with Chiritos, that's a wrap for this video. Uruguay, check. Thanks for coming along, thanks for watching Destination Everywhere, and thanks for subscribing. See you in the next video.